My name's Joyce Lively. I am a docent here in the park, uh, and I love to dress up. I lived in San Francisco until I moved here two years, two and a half years ago now. My husband and I happened to have had um, gone to an event in San Francisco. Oh, boy. Uh, again, my name is Joyce, my lovely dresser, Barbara. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, obviously, we dress a lot differently now than they used to. Women wore a lot of clothing, and they wore it summer and winter. You might be wearing wool in the winter and cotton in the summer, but you still have a lot to wear. So I'm going to sh give you a demonstration with my lovely assistant here who seems to keep getting shorter and shorter. <laughs> um, and it's a costume that I made. And most of the items I'm going to be dressing her with are things that I made. And I intentionally made this costume, which was my first one, to get a sense of what it was like to, to do that. And it was a lot more complicated, even though I was using a sewing machine. It was a lot more complicated because I did do things like make a corset and make hats. So, to that end, I would like to start our demonstration, but I do need some lovely ladies to help me. So let's see. Hmm. I think you're strong enough to hold two things. Okay. This is a pantalette. When I say I need a pantalette, you give that to me, okay? Got that? Pantalette. This is a chemise. When I ask for chemise, you just have that to me. You, I'll come and get it, okay? <laughs> now, let's see. Um, you get to hold the corset and just right. watch the camera a little bit. Um, let's see now. You get to walk, wait, uh, carry the petticoat and the bustle. Oh, let's see, I don't think I have any. Oh, I have somebody lovely for the hoop skirt. And well, that's something for you. But you might need two pants. Just because it's fairly heavy for a skirt. It's more like a coat. Now, the first thing we're going to use is the pantalette. May I have the pantalette? Thank you. Now, when I put the pantalette on, oh see if you notice anything unusual about me putting it on. <clears throat> Let's see. It's a little easier to dress yourself than it is to dress a mannequin. So, does anybody notice anything strange about putting on the underpants? Uh, went over the head. <laughs> yeah, way over the head. Now, I do tie them, and you will see that there are a number of items that I tie because they didn't have zippers. Okay. And a lot of things were just too inconvenient to put but buttons on. Okay. Now, again, since you notice that I put them on over her head, they were open. Once she's fully dressed, you'll find out how much more convenient it was to have them open. <laughs> uh, let's see, may I have the chemise? Thank you. Now, women wore a lot of layers of clothes for a lot of reasons, one of which, for modesty, one for fashion, although most of the people didn't see anything underneath, but the other is that they didn't wear, they didn't clean the outer clothes very, very often. They're very difficult to clean these ornamental things. And she's in the button in the front. So they wanted to put as many clothes, and there's also an underskirt. They uh, wanted to put as many clothes between them and the clothing so that it's the under, uh, under items that you would be wearing. So let's button her up. Would you, would you button her up while I show her in the back? You also might notice how pretty it is and how pretty the pantalettes are. And I can see she's definitely tricky. Um, uh, you didn't see these things, but they made you feel good. In the mu museum next door, you see some luxury items for women, like um, carved ornate ivory, ivory uh, bu uh, mirrors or combs. You saw that yourself. It would make you feel good, and it would make you feel uh, a little higher status than a lot of other people. Okay. 
Now, the next thing we're going to put on is the corset. And I will need you, please, Barbara, the corset, please. Now, in my personal opinion, corsets have a very, very bad rap. And that's because you always hear about them as being, you know, something that, you know, just sucks you in and you can't breathe. It, it's tight, but it's shoes to make it too tight. Just like putting on shoes that are too tight or pants that are way too tight, but boy, don't they look nice. Of course, it's no different. They're also wonderful support for a back. I have two of them and I used to wear them at work. And it would be pretty funny because I wouldn't tie them tightly. They would give me a little bit of a waist, and you can see I don't have much of one. Um, but I was just able to do things. And when I came home at night and took it off, I felt like my whole body was sagging. But it takes the, puts the stress on the back rather than the knees and the legs. So, let's see. Which way does this go? Okay. Now, I particularly need a dresser here because um, this, you have to hold it up, you have to keep button first. So if, would you mind buttoning that from the top? I'll work on the bottom. And if you get it lined up, it sort of goes in its own way. Yeah. Okay. Now this is called an underbust uh, corset. So turn it around. And now we're going to lace it and you, and the reason you normally use a, a, uh, a dresser is because if this is me, somebody else is tightening this. So the first thing I'll do is tighten it like that, just from the middle, because it's laced a certain way. And then I will start from the bottom, pulling it tighter. Do the same thing from the top. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. I think it's these two. Sometimes if I have it, if I don't have the right ones, it gets a little confusing. There. I can do this myself, by the way. Um, and that might seem a little strange, but eventually you get the feel. You get the feel of uh, what these X's feel like from the back. So let's see. Yeah, see? See, I'm having a little trouble here. I didn't get the X's quite right. But I also do have my husband help me. Oops. Now I'm not going to dress her too. Uh, I'm not going to tie this too tight. But but again, uh, if you tighten it uh, enough, it'll give you more of a shape. Let's see. What's, where's this one go? You can see. Now, you can see where it gives you a little bit of a waistline. You can see how it uh, is also uh, gives you, again, a, a, a shape and support because these go all along up there. What I'm going to just pass out the barber so they can see it. Now, these used to be whalebone, so they would be very tight. Now you can get um, boning in plastic like these are or in metal. Okay? But you would be able to see from this just how it, how it is firm. And both the corset and the coat, the, the bodice that you'll be putting on at the top, um, have boning in them. Okay. Of that kind of boning. Okay. And let me tie. Yeah. Tie this off. Again, you see everything's being tied. And then you have to, oops. How did I do this? Then you have to just make sure that these things aren't tangling down. This is the hardest part of the whole thing. And you tie it off, and you stick it someplace. <laughs> Basically, you stick it. Because you don't want it dropping down too far. It gets in the way of, you know, using the pantalets. Okay. Clumsy, but there. <laughs> now, that's, I bought that one. You can also see that it's not totally fitted here, and that's because it's on a form, not on my body. Okay. There are basically two types of corsets. One which is an underbust, and then this one. This is was hard to make. Let me tell you, especially because I didn't have anything to go on in terms of what it's supposed to look like, other than the picture. 
Now this one, let's see, is an overbust. And when I say overbust, it's not like it's completely covering, but it's more like that. Okay. This is the one I like best, okay, just because it gives you more of a straight line down. And again, on this, on these, I could tighten them to my own figure. And your body gives, they don't. Okay, so anybody have any idea what goes next? No. How about the petticoat? Again, you're going to notice it's pretty and it ties. So, I will please, Barbara, need your help putting it on from the front. Right? One of the things is because these things tie, again, you need somebody because you need to be putting it on and not let all the gather so loose that it falls off from the front while you're trying to tie it in the back. So can I ask a question? She lost her pantaloons? <laughs> no. She did. She, she did. did. Are you sure they're just not? She's a loose woman. <laughs> she loose woman. She's loose. Oh, that is so bad. Oh my <laughs> goodness. She did. Her husband didn't tie him tight enough. Yeah, her husband didn't tie it tight enough. Well, let's see. Yeah. Can we get a ball tie? Okay. Can you hold the skirt up now? And, yes. Or do you see the tie? <laughs> okay, just tie them there. <laughs> so the, I usually tie in double knots for exactly this reason. <laughs> so the petticoat's looking completely extraneous because it's going down, the, it's basically the same as the chemise. What's, why do you have to have a... Again, the a, chemise is going to be right next to your body. This is going to absorb more of the sweat. Okay. This helps fill out the dress. Okay. So I mean, right now, she's the, on my petticoat. So you see how just flat this is. Mm -hmm. You can just imagine just this underneath it would fill it out. And of course, you want to have all your curves. Mm -hmm. And that changed, of course, very much over time. What was considered appropriate or not, sexy or not. So let's see. Huh. Okay, Who, what do you think's next? Bustle. Bustle. Yeah, we haven't gotten to the bustle yet. Um, Okay, I'm going to need you to please, Barbara, hold this up okay, around it. Let's make sure I have it on the right side. I did. Uh, most of these that I see are pretty simple. Uh, and now, one more. Okay, I've got the knot. I'm trying to find the creek. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that because I. Anybody here um, see the seaguous? No, it's going to fall. Okay. Uh, any, any, hold on a second. This isn't supposed to happen. Aha! Yeah. I'll hold it up in front of you and just tie it in the back. So has anybody here seen um, Gone with the Wind? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what is her name? Scarlet. No, not Scarlet. This is Scarlet. The woman who helped her dress. Ma'am, I guess that she didn't have much of a name back then. So she would be doing all this. And yes, uh, when I went back to the course and said, too tight, and if you remember, Mammy was like, eh, eh, that's what I would be doing to her as a demonstration. All right, what do you think's next? <laughs> it was very fashionable for a long, long time even when clothing styles changed, for a woman to be wearing a bustle. Um, it was, I'd like to say it was the level of appeal to men, but women often dress for other women. And so whatever would be stylish. Um, he left. He left, okay. Um, so for a period of time, that was stylish. Let's see, I think that's everything, except the skirt. <laughs> Now this skirt is lined. It's, it's actually homespun, lined with cotton. Um, it's quite heavy. It's all gathered and every, every gather is by hand and sewn by hand onto this. One day I thought, oh, I'll make the skirt tonight after work. <laughs> it took days to do this. This is the one I really need help holding yes. it up front. <laughs> up in the front. 
and I've just recently actually made the bustle uh, and found that this fit so much differently that I used to have the mannequin sort of, sort of my shape, but everything changed so much when I had to have the skirt go over the bustle that I reduced her size. <laughs> so let's see. We're gonna need a little more this way. So let's see how uh, how hard this is gonna to be to button. It has to go up. Okay. Now mind you, this used to just fit straight around my waist. But you can probably already see the shape it's taking is very different. Ugh. I don't have my my reading glasses on, so it's hard to see something. Mm -hmm. Do you match it with no AC? Right. Do you have one? Corset and Okay. Now, so that's the skirt. Lovely profile. And anybody know what's next? I think there's anything else that goes on the body? No. Okay. <laughs> But she's well protected. <laughs> she's well protected. <laughs> now, this is the bodice. Again, this ended up being time consuming because even though I had a pattern, I had never done things like boning before. Um, put that on. Now, I'm going to try to use a button hook. Okay? We have a shoe button hooks in the other room that look like this. And I actually got this off off of eBay, and when I came back, it was so huge, and I realized it's for people, um, A, it's meant for really people who have arthritis, but it's usually used for something heavy, like coats. So I can't use that on here, but there is, let's see, but there is an another side to this button hook, and I'll just pick one that maybe you can see, which is, this is the second one down, that you put the loop all the way around the button, Again, this is easier to do if you're wearing it. So with my arthritis, it's much easier for me to use this. Um. Oops. Mm. Then the hard one is really under here, under all of this. Uh, I'm going to do this one by hand, okay? So, like I said again, this is easy if I'm wearing it. Now, is the blouse attached under there, I'm or? I'm going to get to that in just a minute. Okay. Oh, one thing I forgot to do. Oh. Did you see the little tie hanging out the bottom? This also gets tied <laughs> at the waist. Oh, <laughs> Sort of keep it on. Wow. Okay. It took me two hours. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> That's why they're not dresses. Well, and I, and I double, um, you know, and I double knot the knots. So if I'm trying to undress myself at home, if I tied it too tightly, it doesn't work too well. I have another, another string to hide. Two more, two more. She doesn't even have boots on. <laughs> we haven't gotten to that yet. I know. We were talking about how much time it took. Okay. So it's, <laughs> it's made, it's cut to go over a bustle. Hmm. Now, we're not done yet. Of course, she might need to have stockings and shoes. I have stockings and shoes on, gentlemen, if you like. Um, they're below the knee, so they roll. Usually it's black or white. Okay, this is a similar a similar boot that you would that you would wear. Just a, a plain black everyday boot with buttons. This one also has. The, uh, what's the little hooks called? The little hooks. Well, the ones that you thread around. Anyway, okay. anyway it has hooks on them too. So um, this uh, you, you asked a question about the box. This is a collar. Just a collar. It's actually a detachable collar, and on this particular dress, I have it slip stitched in. Now, however, are the sleeves the same way? 
Well, let me show you that. Let me tell you about the collars and then I'll go to the sleeves because that's a good question. I also have some other examples of collars that I might want to use. Because okay. I wouldn't have a collar and over next door we talk about having detachable collars. So I might want a collar like this. Okay. Or I, this one I thought would be lovely. Come on here. You know, it fits in with the color of the garment. Mm -hmm. So I would be able to just change it if I wanted something more formal or not. So that's that. Let's see. Now I'm still not quite done. If it's cold, you may want some gloves. It's this way. Okay. Sometimes they have the fingers. Of course, if it's winter, you might want longer gloves. We're still not finished. You might, it might be cold. And you'll often see in TV and movies that women aren't running around wearing coats a whole lot. Um, so you might want a simple shawl. You may want, if it's depending on the weather, a very pretty shawl, lighter weight. If it's very cold out, you might want something more appropriate and heavier. Um, little other things that you might want uh, might be a little handbag, and they're called reticules. So you might be wanting to carry one of these. Now, we're still not done. <laughs> You might want to go out so you wear a bonnet. Now let me tell you, these are hard to make. <laughs> and I made two of them. <laughs> okay? They don't have to match anything you're wearing. And the more elaborate they are, the better. And if you've ever seen movies, like I think of Jane Austen movies, different period, they're always so excited. There's new ribbons in the store or things like that. They're always dressing and undressing <laughs> their hats. Um, Hairstyles. Uh, I, I cheated on my hairstyle today because I really shouldn't be wearing a ponytail. But there's a lot of hair down back there to do anything with. Hairstyles then were really severe. So, I mean, like you see here, this is one that I have. It was so severe, I actually put a braid in the front because I did find some historical pictures that made it a little you know, friendlier but it would be a severe hairdo with a bun at the back. And for a very, very long time, decades, that's how women wore their hair. So you might see on th something like uh, the Civil War shows, these dour looking women who probably look 30 years older than they are. And they just look dreadful and mean and nasty. But they weren't, it's just how it was. Uh, and then maybe, whoops, they put and then, I, I often wonder if I, sometimes I can do this. Yes. And you might have a fan. And does anybody have any questions? Because we have now dressed a lady. Thank you very, very much. The sleeves. Yeah, oh, the sleeves. The sleeves are detachable. They're silk. They're hand sewn in. And it was very hard to hand sew in something like this to get it all facing the right direction. In fact, I have the cuffs facing the wrong direction <laughs> in them. Uh, so they have to be washed separately. In fact, I have to say, I wear so many things under this that I've worn it so few times. I've washed the skirt and I'm terrified to yeah. wash this other than pieces at a time underneath the sink. Yeah. Um, it's homespun, so it, I, I, ideally it's color fast. I don't really know. Okay. Okay. Right. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Barbara. You're welcome.